Wow, it's awesome. Beautiful up here. That's where my bus comes from. Yeah. Oh, oh, Skyline Rocks! Oh, oh, Skyline Rocks! Oh, hospital. Downstairs. First floor. Lobby. Homo Center. Second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor, seventh floor, eighth floor, ninth floor, tenth floor, and a bunch of stuff. And that floor right there, the one with the light on, is one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, Hi, this is the sixth floor, and this is how the sixth floor looks. Okay. Yep, this is how pretty much the whole building looks like. It looks like theirs, but it's like different floors, and some people decorate their house different. This is Ferdos's house, and this is some dude's house, but this is the sixth floor. So, yeah. Peace out, Skyline! <coughs> What's your name? Yasmin. What what age are you? I'm ten years old. What um what's your favorite thing about Skyline Tower, please? Um, it's fun because it has field trips and home centers and like campsites and stuff like that. My name is Ferdosa and I'm ten years old and I go to um, Twin City International. My name is Esther and I'm 11 years old and I go to Hagar Academy. Morocco, 11, Emily Gray Charter School. My name is <coughs> Barlene. I go to Hagar Academy. I'm 13 years old. My name is Yasmin. I'm, I'm, I'm 10 and I go to Sanity Park. My name is Ibak. Eight. Hi, Grant. Um, I was born in Africa. I was born in Kenya. 
I was born in Kenya. I've been U.S. since I was born. I, I, I'm born in um, Washington, Seattle. And I had been here in for um, three years. Four, four years. Mm, I've been here in four years. I was wondering how the United States would be, if it would be different than America, or if it would be exactly just like Africa or something like that. Um, um, when I was a little kid, um, I used to, I used to, um, I used to play with my friends, and they were very nice to me. So, and then when I came to America, um, they were just, um, and the, when I came here, some 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 kids are a little bit mean. In Africa. My grandma lived there and my friends and my aunt, so it was fun and precious. It was weird because I kind of missed my dad and people who lived with me because I live with my grandma now and my dad doesn't want to come to America. He says, I hate America. He doesn't want to come here. So it's weird not living with my dad. It was, it was kind of scary because I didn't know anyone that was in Minnesota. It's fun living in a new place. Like when you, uh, when you, um, when you live in here, and then you, he you, you are here for a like, little bit, and then you go to another place. Then you go move around. Like you go every state all the time. Hi, my name is Estelian, and and I was my name is Estelian. I was born in I was born in Africa, and I'm ten years old, and I'm in sixth grade, so. Today my friends teach me how to speak Oromo. I only know the B words of Oromo and uh, Salam Tu, uh, Guracha, and Balige. That's the words I know. Bro. So I shush. For a long time, I probably would have said Ratchet. Ratchet. It's um, it's this funny tool that makes a like the best sound for a tool. This like click. My favorite word is fantastic. Oh, I think I like the word plethora today. It means like to have a lot of something. My favorite word in my native language is um, kindergarten because it's tough to spell when you're in kindergarten, but then you learn how to spell it and you feel very accomplished for learning how to read and write. I'll say animal kodale. <laughs> is meanderer. It means someone who wanders around. One recent word that comes to mind is erudition. What does that mean? And that means to be scholarly, scholarly knowledge. So. Uh, and I like that word because it's, it talks a lot about knowing things about from books, things like that, but not necessarily having a lot of practical, real-world knowledge, that sort of thing. So that's one of my favorite words. I guess I just have to say hi, because I like saying hi. I don't know. Oba, which means flower. Yes, okay, thank you. My favorite word would be rosas. Um, boy, that's a hard one. What's my favorite word in, in my native language, English? I think my favorite word would be delicious. Because I love to eat and I love delicious food. My son's name's Samuel. <laughs> yeah. My favorite word in my native language is superfluous. Superfluous, I, I think, is kind of like in excess. What's your name? My name and is your Stella. age? And I'm ten years old. And my name is Stillin. Um, where were you? Where? What is your favorite thing about the Skyline Towers? My favorite thing about the 
uh, Sky and Tower is Sky and Tower is fun, and um, um, they can help you with your homework. Um, and if you want help, they can help you. And the people that live in Sky and Tower is nice, and they're not like disrespectful. And some of them like uh, some of them are disrespectful. And my name is Mr. Nun, and I'm happy for everybody will be nice. And the playground's awesome. Lots of people come to the playground and they play in the playground nice way. They share the swings, slides, everything that has been playing on this year. And everybody's happy in Scarlet Tower. I hope lots of people use the Scarlet Tower. This is my auntie house. And it's cute as a princess. And can you see the Quran up there? And this is my little cousin, and his name is Little Summer. How are you? And what's the matter? What's the matter? No, no, no. What's the matter? It's dead. I love you. I love you. My see. My see. No, my see. My see. Can you see that? This is my little brother. He loves him more than nobody else, even his mom. He likes me so bad. And this is my little cousin. Where did you grow up and when did you come to the United States? I was grew up in Ethiopia. I came to United States 2007. How is your new home different from where you home different from where you grew up? For example, how are religious or culture customs, foods and languages the same or different? They are different because the place I was grow up there is there is there is a lot of culture and the food. However, it, when I came to United States, there is a lot of r cultural and religious and there are a lot of different foods. However, I try to learn these foods and uh, communicate with people and learn the new cultures. However, right now I adapt everything to United States. Uh, did you have to learn a new language to come to your new home? What helped you the most to learn a new language? I think when I came to United States, I don't even know how to speak English and communicate with people. However, I tried to go to school and learn English and I attend school every morning to go and learn English right now. I know some of some words to communicate with people. I'm so happy to know this English. Should should native languages be spoken at home? Why or why not? Yes, because there is elder people who sit in home. They don't, they don't know how to speak English. They have to speak their native languages. For example, when I, can, when I go to my home, I speak to my native language with my mom and dad. When I go outside or school, I have to speak English to communicate with people and to understand. Why is it important to remember a... a Remember and speak your native language. Because if you don't practice your native language, maybe you lo you you lose you lost this uh, native language. You have to practice with your dad or mom to remember your native languages. My name is David Zemmler. I work here at Skyline as an AmeriCorps member with the employment program helping people here find jobs, but I also teach the English class too at night. Um, my name is Steven Shriver. 
I am an AmeriCorps member here at Skyline, so I work in the youth programs in the Homework Center, and I also teach an AM English class. I started teaching English back in the fall of 2009 when I started my service here as an AmeriCorps member. It was part of the job description and actually part of what attracted me to this position here at Skyline. How did I start teaching English? Um, what we had is we had a lot of residents who were coming down with their kids, their pre-K kids, and dropping their kids off at pre-K. And apparently we had had an AM English class here before, um, but at the time we didn't. And so what we had was a lot of moms who were really busy and couldn't make it to the evening English class. So they needed something else because they wanted to learn, um, but they didn't have a class to go to. Well, I generally teach one age group here at Skyline, which is more of the elderly residents. But I have taught different age groups before. There's another place where I teach some English, which is more anywhere ranging from like teenage, like 18, 19 year olds up through 40, 50 year olds. And that can be different because people come to class for different reasons. They have different learning styles and they learn at different paces. And a lot of that is just getting to know the students and being able to adapt things to individual learning styles and people's different needs and personalities. You have to be constantly checking with the people in your class too because you need to make sure that they're getting it um, and give them as much practice as possible. So to be able to, to do all of the organizing and, uh, and to be able to constantly be checking in with people and all the paperwork and everything else you have to do, that's definitely challenging. But again, it's, it's rewarding to hear when it pays off. Well, I do like it. <laughs> it isn't always easy. Uh, like, like I mentioned before, especially when you're dealing with classes of people from a lot of different backgrounds, ages, it's really important to just be able to perceive students' different needs and be able to make sure that everyone gets something out of the class, that everyone's happy and that everyone's learning. And that can take some time and it takes some ability to just to relate to students and be able to work hard and come up with lesson plans and materials that everyone can benefit from. We work a lot on vocabulary and we work a lot on grammar. One of the ways that we do vocabulary is we have a big picture dictionary. So it's a dictionary, like a normal dictionary has words, but this has pictures to go along with everything. And so when we start a unit, if we're starting a unit on things you can buy in the grocery store, we'll print off three or four pages that show you all these different things that you can buy in a grocery store and we'll practice those. Um, so we'll go to our whiteboard and write down all those words and usually our students know probably about half of them. And after we're done going through all the words, we'll ask them, is there anything that needs more explaining? Is there anything you don't know up here? Having students do activities that are like more guided, like me giving them a worksheet or saying we're doing this activity and having it be more controlled like that is important, but also kind of letting them go on their own and communicate with each other freely and come up with their own things like making their own project where they're writing or coming up with things that are kind of more their own creation. I think that's also a very important part of learning how to read and write and spell. So I'd say there's a lot of different approaches you can take to it. There isn't one way to do it. Well, with the class here at Skyline, Part of it is just being able to appreciate each student's different style of learning and also each student's different reasons for coming to class. I think a lot of people at Skyline come to the class just for somewhere to come and interact with other residents here and feel like they're learning something and doing something productive. And it always isn't the case that they're going to take everything from every single class and will remember everything and learn the next material and remember that and go out and use it in their everyday life. So that's something that's sometimes hard to adjust to, but also just appreciating that the students come there and that you are an important person in their lives and they come there to really to interact with you and the other teachers and their peers. That's something that's very valuable to me. How I look at that A, B, C, E, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Woo! English and not.
Berat berat, ini aku harus semua tak. Wah bertahan, ada menggelas kan bertahan. Definitely. He does learn English. He's now hadam bertahan. He said he learned how to speak English, but he's trying his best to learn English and he's trying to be. Sis kelas. Wah. He goes to this class and learns English. I was taking English class for like two years. Um, one um one year. I've learned English since. Uh, I was five or five or six or maybe three and uh, I've been taking English classes for five years. Um, each day I take like one like, um, like for example I take one word for each day I take like and then I take I take a sheet of paper and we write some stuff like our teacher says and we take one and then we take a break and then we go outside then we come back and we do and uh, the next day we get to do each word at a time <laughs>